السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His entire household and all his companions May Allah bless them all and bless every single one of us My beloved brothers and sisters In the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the closest to him is the one who tried his or her best to be close to him. If you try to get closer to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he will be even closer to you than your trial. And this is why in a hadith Qudsi, which means a hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is narrating what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Whoever comes to me walking, I come to him rushing. In, an, in the same narration, it starts off by saying, Whoever comes to me a hand span, I come to him an entire foot. And this goes to show that if we make an effort to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will always find that Allah will be closer to us than our own trial. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us closeness to him and may he be close to us too. This having been said, if you take a look at Revelation and the Quran in particular, you will come to realize that the stories that are mentioned in the Quran are not only connected to the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Allah has selected certain worshippers of him to be mentioned in the Quran who were perhaps unknown and who would have been absolutely unknown to us had they not been made mention of by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, Luqman the wise, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon us all, upon him and upon all the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was a wise man. The narrations say he was an African from Africa, a noba, meaning from Sudan. And what was it? that was so great about him that mention was made of him and his advice to his son in the Quran. If we just stop there for a moment, we will learn a lesson from that, that when we do something good that is close to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appreciates. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also thankful. He shows gratitude as well, although he does not need to do that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to, him, to himself as a shakur as well. The one who is also thankful, the one who shows gratitude, subhanAllah. So Allah made mention, subhanahu wa ta'ala, of a man who perhaps some might have considered insignificant, but in the eyes of Allah, he was very significant. Because he struggled, he strove to earn the pleasure of Allah. And on top of that, he fulfilled the mission that he was sent to on earth for. What was that mission? To worship Allah alone and to pass the torch. To pass the torch to the next generation. I'm worshipping Allah. I try my best. If Allah has blessed us with children, it is our duty to try our best to convey the message minimum to our kids, to those whom we interact with. And this is why the advice of Luqman alayhi salam is made mention of in the Quran. Imagine an entire surah, a whole portion of the Quran is named after this man. He was not a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was just a wise man and he was a pious person. So Allah says, وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِظُهُ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ Remember when Luqman the wise told his son, O oh my son, do not associate partners with Allah. For indeed association of partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the gravest error and oppression you could ever commit. That's the beginning. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, remember, there was a wise man and this is what he said. To whom? Libnihi. To his son. He spoke to his son in a beautiful way. He won his son's heart over by speaking in the correct manner. And from this we learn that when you want to win people over, you will never win them over with harshness. You will never win them over by force. They may become subservient, but their hearts will not be with you because nothing happens by force. You need to convince. You need to be a person of high values, of high morals, of beautiful speech, of respect of all. And this is when you'll be able to win people. This is when you win them truly. They will be convinced that the message that I'm hearing is actually the truth. 
The message that this person has come with is actually beautiful. Look at how lovely this person is. I'd like to emulate. I'd like to follow. And for this reason, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent upon the highest level of character and conduct. Allah describes him saying, you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are upon the highest level or a great level, the greatest level of character and conduct. So if we have developed our character and conduct, we will be much more effective in terms of being able to convince people to do what is right and being able to convince them to abstain from that which is wrong by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Luqman the wise, as he advises his son, he continues, and we won't mention all the pieces of advice, but we will mention some of it. The idea is for us to be able to gain the closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he achieved. It was something great. So if I want to achieve that closeness, I need to know that it's for that reason that Allah makes mention of his advice in the book, in the Quran. So he says regarding prayer, regarding salah, Ya Bunaya Akim is Salata wa Murbil Ma'roof. Oh, my son, establish your prayer. Don't just read your Salah. You know, don't just perform. You know, the term sometimes in the English language it's quite difficult because in Arabic you say Salli, and that's made up of two, or one might say three letters, Sad and two lambs. Salli meaning fulfill your Salah. And to translate it into the English language is so difficult because even if you use two or three words, you won't ever get the feel of the term salli in the Arabic language. So some people say perform your salah. And others argue that salah is not a performance. It's not something that you are performing. It's actually an act of worship, an act of closeness to Allah. Rather use the word fulfill your prayer or better still establish your prayer. It is something to be established. As a Muslim, salah is not just a one of thing. Establishment of it would mean that on a regular basis, when the time sets in, you are worried about it, you establish it. This is the establishment of prayer. So this is advice number one or one of the very, very important pieces of advice, establish your prayer. Obviously at that time, their prayer was not exactly like ours, but it was somehow an act of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's instructing his son, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us fulfill this instruction in, the, in terms of our sharia, and at the same time, may he help us convey that message to our children as well. So establishment of prayer, never be lazy, no matter what, fulfill that prayer. If for some reason, like the Prophet says, Man nama an salatin aw nasiyaha, fal yusalliha idha dhakaraha. Whoever has slept over a salah, uncalculated sleeping. What does that mean? That means that you don't just say, okay, I'm going to sleep and I'll set my clock for eight o'clock. It's fine. That is calculated. In that case, we are sinful. But uncalculated meaning I set it for four o'clock, for half four, something happened and I didn't get up. You know, I overslept. The hadith says, whoever has overslept or forgotten, total forgetfulness, they should fulfill the salah as soon as they remember. As soon as you get up, as soon as you remember, fulfill the salah that you've just missed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you by his will. So this goes to show that establishment of prayer is such that if for some reason you have skipped it, and that we're talking here of valid reasons like sleep or forgetfulness and so on, in that case, you would fulfill it immediately. Still ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you for having forgotten or delayed and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. But extremely important, it is the founding pillar of the rest of your deeds. Your salah is in order, the rest of your deeds will be in order. You find in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Utlu ma uhiya ilayka min al kitabi wa akim is salata in a salata tanha anil fasha iwal munkar. Allah is instructing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Read from that which has been revealed to you. That which has been revealed to you, meaning the Quran, read it, recite it, understand it, and so on, convey the message, and so on, and establish your prayer. For indeed, prayer will protect you from immorality and evil. It protects you. So if you have the concern, I'm in wudu, I'm in ablution, I'm worried about my next prayer, no matter what sin is around you, you will immediately think to yourself, you know what, Allah comes before all these pleasures of the world. You know, there has to come a time when in the life of an individual, he or she realizes that whatever sin I've committed in the past is actually 
not beneficial at all. In fact, it's harmful. What did I gain by it? What am I going to gain by it? Drop it, cut it, and turn to Allah. You will find the preparation for the hereafter will be such that Allah will be pleased with you. May He be pleased with you and I and us all. Amen. So that is the message, the first message that we are speaking about this afternoon, that of Salah. And on top of that, the same verse says, enjoying that which is good encourage people to do good and discourage them from evil in a beautiful way you know i've always seen the messages of the quran such that when it comes to conveying the message to the non-muslims allah says speak to them you know with calmness speak to them with good words i give you two examples when moses the prophet may peace be upon him musa alayhi salam was sent to the pharaoh Fir'aun, he was told you and your brother go to the pharaoh Go and speak to him with soft words. Perhaps he might remember, he might take heed, perhaps he might be fearful. What was it that was going to make him fearful? Soft words. You cannot come to someone and say, I'll beat you up if you don't read your salah, and I'll thoroughly destroy you if you don't do this. They might become subservient for a moment, but their hearts won't be convinced. But if you talk to them, look, my brother, it's not good for you to do this and so on. My sister, you know, this dress code or my brother, whatever it is. But in a beautiful way, they, will, they are more likely not only to lend you an ear, but to understand what you are saying and to fulfill it. So this is why, look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Musa alayhi salam when he is instructing him to go to the worst tyrant that existed at the time. The one who used to say, I'm the God. And Allah says, relax. When you go to him, cool, you know, take it easy. Speak to him with soft words. Even though you are from us, we are sending you with revelation, with power, with signs, with miracles. We are with you, but speak to him calm. This shows us when we speak to the non-Muslims, we are instructed to speak, you know, with soft terms. What about the Muslimin? Amongst us, let's learn to spread love. Let's learn to spread peace. People are doing something wrong. No need to swear. No need to abuse. No need to become violent. No. We will use soft terms and we will continue praying to Allah. If they are guided, alhamdulillah, it was always from Allah. If they are not guided, so that is their link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hisabuhum ala Allah. Their account is with Allah, not with you, not with I. So don't become violent as a result, not at all. Don't become abusive as a result, lest you not only lose your own respect, but you present the wrong image of this entire deen and religion that we have to propagate. The goodness that you have will not be looked at as goodness because of the way you approached it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May He make us from those who are calm. Sometimes we want to see results immediately. I talk to you and I want to see results now. If not, I will put it up on Facebook and everywhere else. This person is astray and this person is not fit to be spoken to. And is that Islam? That's not Islam. I pray and I continue praying. And guess what? If I die and you die, and if you die upon misguidance, it's not going to harm me in any way. In fact, I will get a reward for having tried. But your guidance is up to you, between you and Allah. In fact, it is Allah who guides. So it's not even totally and wholly up to you, but it's between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all and may He open our doors. This is how we should encourage people to do good. This is how we should try and discourage people from bad, without abuse, without becoming violent, without using words that are derogatory, without becoming hurtful. This is how we do things. If you see a man or a woman or someone doing something bad and you'd like to guide them, there is a way of doing things. There is a system, there is a style, and that style is prophetic and it is in the Quran and Allah has given so many examples of it. And Allah has shown us results of that. Remember this. So if a person has done something wrong, understand that it is your duty not to make it worse. So that's something important. Sometimes you have a person, perhaps I'm giving an example of the cuff and you happen to see them with a bottle of alcohol and you'd like to remind them. So you could, you could look at them and you could choose perhaps to spit at them, to swear at them, to shout at them, to abuse them, to you know, perhaps become violent and so on. That would be wrong. Not only is it a derogatory, but perhaps you'd be penalized in terms of the law of the land. The better way of doing things, the more prophetic way of doing things, the more correct way of doing things is to begin with humbleness, with character, with conduct. Trust me, if they were to leave that bad habit because of an effort that Allah allowed you to make, it's better for you than whatever material item this world holds. This is why Ali ibn Abi Talib 
When it comes to the day of Khaybar, the Prophet ﷺ says to him, Wallahi la an yahdi Allahu bika rajulan wahidan, khayrun laka min humurin na'am. If Allah has chosen you to guide even one person, it's better for you than whatever material items this world holds. So the first example was that of Fir'aun, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, speak to him calm, speak to him with soft words. The other example is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about debating with the people of the book or presenting the opposite argument to the people of the book, how should it be done? Here we're talking of people who are not Muslim. You want to convince them, you want to discuss with them. So it shows that yes, you should be, but the discussion must be with respect. The discussion must not be abusive, no insult. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal maw'idati al hasana wa jadilhu billati ya ahsan call towards the path of your Lord with wisdom, with tact, call in the most beautiful way, subhanallah, al mawida al hasana the reminder that is the most beautiful way of doing things, call towards your Lord with beauty in your speech, in your style, in your way, in your habit, don't just condemn people to hellfire. And this is sometimes what people are doing. You see someone, you say, A'udhu Billah, Nari Jahannam. This man is in Jahannam. That one is in Jahannam. As though you are the only one who's got a rubber stamp on your shoulder saying, okay, paradise is yours. You're the owner, you stand at the door and decide who goes in and out. That's wrong. A'udhu Billah. Paradise belongs to the owner who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same Lord who's telling you that call people towards goodness. Wallahu Akbar. And this is why Allah says, Jadilhum ahsan. Even if you have to discuss with them a mutual discussion, or you have to debate with them a mutual debate, you know, both parties are talking, presenting arguments, responding to the arguments. Let it be in the best possible way, most respectful. Imagine, this is our duty towards the non Muslims. This is our duty towards the non-Muslims. Imagine our relationship with the Muslims themselves and how it should be on a much higher level. Sadly, today, a small difference of opinion and the next thing, we don't want to greet, we don't want to respond to greeting, we want to start spreading this and spreading that, that does not serve the Muslim Ummah any good. In fact, it only causes harm and it only causes hatred. Let's learn to cleanse our hearts. And this is why if I were to continue with what Luqman alayhi salatu wassalam has said, you will find that he says, Wasbir ala ma asabak. Immediately after saying, enjoy that which is good and discourage people from bad, he says, bear patience regarding that which has got to you, which might not be as positive as you would have liked. So if something got to you that is negative, bear patience. Ask Allah to help you and continue bearing that patience. Also, sabr also refers to restraining yourself. Restrain yourself. You know, don't just vent your frustration. Don't just react to every action. No, restrain yourself. Calm down. Think very hard. Think of an action. Think of its reaction. Think of absolutely every angle that you can think of before you act. And sometimes you might want to sit down and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leave it at that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Also this great man, Luqman, the wise, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's peace be upon us all. He says to his son, oh my son, when you walk, make sure you walk correctly. The walk, how to walk? When you're walking, don't walk like an arrogant person on earth. Imagine, the walk, the style of walking needs to be modified. May Allah help us all. May Allah make us from those who are calm, a lot of the times we wouldn't have thought that the way I walk can be an arrogant walk. So, you know, I'm bouncing around with my shoulder this way and that way. When I turn around how I look at people, all this could determine that I'm an arrogant person. May Allah forgive us all. This is why let's take a moment, inshallah, to purify our conduct, the way we speak, the way we talk, the way we walk. And even when raising the voice, this same verse speaks about how the worst of voices is that of a braying ass, meaning a donkey. You can't understand. Sometimes we happen to scream and yell and shout, whether it's someone we work with or we work for or they work for us. No need for that. You're a mu'min. You fear Allah. Calm down. Lower your tone. Relax. Take it easy. This is Allah. It's His message. And you are being taught that the most noble were those who had these characters. And this is why Luqman the wise is made mention of in the Quran. 
these beautiful messages. May Allah give us all the opportunity to go through the beautiful surah, Surah Luqman. I call on you to go through that surah when you have a moment in the English language so you can understand the messages. They are quite clear and it's a beautiful act of worship. But let's not just go through the verse without thinking of its meaning. And let's not just think of its meaning without thinking of practicing upon it. It's important for us to practice as best as we can. Develop yourself for the sake of Allah and see the difference not only in your life but in the lives of all those around you as though a candle has been lit and everyone receives from its light may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that